the punctual, man. I never had three people show up at the same time. I know you said 12. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are on point, especially Paul. Paul is in prep, too, on top of that. Yeah. That would be better to watch NFL football. <laughs> you guys, I'm you, you guys, asleep, bro. I ate and I started dozing off. Oh, shit. I know, bro. That rebound, I literally fall asleep driving, bro. Yeah, dude. Uh, it's ridiculous. I have a got, monster in the freezer that I'm going to go pop open in like a few minutes. <laughs> you know, I feel like you look a lot bigger than, than last, last podcast. Oh, bro. Uh, I, I was 274, almost 275 this morning. Holy that's, shit. Uh, that's oh. the biggest I've ever been. <laughs> Damn. You guys you guys know uh Beef Stew, right? Stewart? Yeah. Hi guys. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny cuz cuz he he won he won last year, right? So 2022 and he won 2023, yeah. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Well, huh? there you go. What you got over there, Paul? Beef. Beef. Yeah. Beef. There you go. Is there a way I could see everybody at the same time? Yeah. Oh shit! I was yeah, like, yeah. I heard, I heard fucking Stu, and I was like, what the fuck it? <laughs> I can't see. What's yeah. up, Stu? Oh, there we go. There we go. Yeah. You got to put it on. Uh, I forget the mode. Gallery. Like, yeah, you just that. swipe. it, Yes. Exactly. Exactly. You gotta put it on the gallery. Can you can you turn your phone sideways? I think you and Paul got it. Yeah. There we go. Boom. Perfect. So we're well, not gonna. Dude, I'm not gonna lie. I'm kind of hungover right now. I, oh. I, I, I had a little, <laughs> I had a little going away party because I'm moving up to Washington in like week now. So, yeah, people were feeding me free drinks all night. <laughs> Wait, so right, you were in SD to visit family, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, but my my parents, so my grandparents live in San Diego. My parents live in Washington, and I'm gonna be moving up to like live near them. Not with them, but near them. Oh, okay, uh, okay. Yeah. But but you you're in uh um Arizona? Yeah, I'm I'm finished Phoenix for like a year and a half now. I fucking hate it now, man. That's gotta be as hot as fuck out there, man. Huh? Yeah, it's hot, but like it's also just like there's just nothing interesting here, man. It's just like grid streets and freeways and strip malls. There's like it's just so unnatural. Uh, you know, What's, you guys are all in California, right? Yeah, yeah. I guess there's probably parts of California that are like that, but at least you got the water there, you know? Like, people should actually live in California. Nobody should live here. Nobody. <laughs> Fucking <laughs> weird. <laughs> so, uh, the heat over here has been pretty bad, too, though, man. The humidity is terrible. Where, where do you, are you guys all around LA? Yeah. 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 Okay. But they're in, you guys are like, by Norwalk area, I'm in I'm in West Hollywood, so th there's a lot of strange shit going on in West Hollywood, but 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 it's still nice. It's still nice to be here, man. I'm, no complaints here. No complaints yeah. here. But uh, so so you you prefer SD over over Arizona? Oh yeah, I mean San Diego is so expensive though, man. Like I couldn't live there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we're oh, barely. Surviving out here, bro. We're barely surviving. We're scraping up fucking pennies to get GH and shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a hustle. I it ain't that much better in Washington, but they don't have income tax there, so that's that's good. That's very good. And is it like overcast and rainy like eighty percent of the time out there too, though? Yep, yep. That's where I grew up, man. I love it. <laughs> that's where I love that weather. Yeah. So uh beside the being hungover, like how's your <laughs> off season? <laughs> how's how's your off season going? This is good, dude. I'm I'm starting off with like a little mini cut. So I started uh, I got my blood stone a little bit ago. I've been get been back off for like two weeks, but uh I'm doing a little mini cut to start. I'm like two sixty four yesterday. Yeah, this morning I was probably like two sixty. <laughs> we don't need to talk about that. Um, but yeah, I, I thought I'm going to pull another few pounds off here and just like tidy up a bit and stay really lean. But honestly, bro, like I don't, I've never seen you, I guess besides that off season before you would say, I've never seen you really put on much body fat. 
Yeah, I don't get fat easy, but I want to keep it like really tight because I I got up to like two ninety five last year, and it was just it there was probably ten pounds of shit on me, just like water, you know. So I'm gonna change some of my drugs and you know some of my just to stay leaner overall. I don't need to get that heavy again, you know. If I want to compete at like two fifty five, two sixty, I don't need to be two ninety five. Yeah, yeah, just excessive, you know. So. Honestly, I, I feel like guys with the faster metabolisms, from what I've noticed, like Antonio, right? I feel yeah. like he can add muscle without really pushing it too heavy. Like he could, he only gets up to like two fifty, right, off season, which is crazy because Antonio, I I'm he looks like he even got that heavy. Wow, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's pretty heavy for Antonio. Yeah, but like I feel like those guys can like stay lean and just put on a bunch of tissue. Whereas I feel like me or like Joe, we have to we have to push the weight up to a point. I can't eat as much as Joe without like getting too heavy, but I feel like we can't stay super, super lean and like put on a ton of muscle really. Well, I'll tell you what, I've I've gotten heavy before and I think you need to get there at least once or twice huh? to like, you know, get your body acclimated to it. But after that it's like you know, there's no need to push back up there. I, I, mean, I, was like, telling, but, I was telling Paul that this will be the last time I probably get to my heaviest, like where I'm actually trying to hit a heavy, heavy weight. Uh, like this whole rebound, I've done nothing but clean. I haven't had one cheat meal. Like, so all of it's been clean food. But, you know, you're going to you're gonna accumulate some fat and stuff when you're pushing for the that size and stuff. Yeah. You want to just solidify it after that. You don't even get any bigger. So are you up like 25 pounds? What were you on stage? Like 245 pounds? I was 230 on stage. 230? What? Whoa. Yeah, you look bigger than that. You know what the crazy thing is? I think he always has that two meals that are 300 grams of carbs. Everything is under 300 grams. So, I mean, he's growing on a little bit of food. But not yeah, but the, morning, the morning of the show, I was 228, like, fasted. Damn. Um, and then this morning, I was 274. So, like, I, the last 10 pounds that I took off my body, I don't think I needed to do it. But we wanted to make me a heavyweight, and then decided last minute to just make me a super heavy, so that I, I came in a little more full. Oh, he didn't think I could fill out, but yeah, I think that's why my body's so responsive right now. That that has to be the biggest two thirty I've ever seen because you're not that short, bro. Like, how, how tall are you? Five eight and a half. That that's oh, not okay. that's not that short to be. That big at two thirty, honestly. I think I, I just have that that wide like clavicle kind of thing going on, and then I have those low lats, so it just gives me that illusion of just being really wide. Yeah. So because you guys, you guys remember um, what's his name? I think it's Ben. Uh, he won. He won the USA's two years ago or did twenty one? Pollock, Ben Pollock, Pollock. Ben Pollock, yeah. Oh I mean, yeah. So he's like. He's really wide too, but he was heavy. Like he was like, I think he was in the mid two forties when he won his class. At like five uh, eight, right? Yeah, yeah. He's about my height. He was he was training up in Oregon at the same gym as me for a little bit um, when I was when I was still up there. But the guy is just fucking tank in person. I don't know if you've ever seen him, but he's like just front to back, very thin. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. I haven't, I haven't met him. I think, I think that's that power lifting muscle, like the real dense. Yeah. Even though I, I'm not a power lifter by any means, but I did, I did train really heavy for 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 a while. Mm -hmm. I, I, I trained with, with Larry Wills in the Bronx for maybe like two years, so I always, I'm always heavier than I appear, you know. Uh -huh. Which, which I don't think is a good thing per se, right? I, I don't, I don't, mm -hmm. I don't think that benefits you in bodybuilding because you have guys like Z Zaid. Made light heavyweight. Zayd is five nine, bro, and 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 he looks fucking like two fifty. And I'm like, he, he measured up good against like uh, against Joe and uh, who was the the uh, heavyweight uh, guy? Uh, Josh Josh Manley. So, yeah, yeah, Manley. Yeah, Ash, yeah. <laughs> like the three of you guys together, it wasn't like you know three totally different bodybuilders. I didn't know you were over two thirty, Joe. I thought, thought mm -hmm. you were bigger than that. Like, I mean. Yeah, fuck you. Look, they look big. 
Yeah, in that lineup. It's crazy. Well, Zay, dude, he was like, I think like it was 17 days out when he was messaging me and he had to drop like 18 pounds. What? And I was like, what the fuck? He was, I was like, you sure you want to come in like that? He was like, yeah, we're going to do it. Okay. <laughs> Bro, did you, see him at hard. did you see him at weigh-ins? You're too, uh, oh, Zay, no, 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 I didn't. Well, I th- I thought he I thought I thought he would he wasn't gonna make the show. The, the dude was he looked like he was dying. Bro, yeah. this he was pale, right? I saw his Bro. stories. He was like pale. He looked like his eyes were sunken in and shit. He he could barely talk to me. He was like whispering. I'm like, damn, this guy. Yeah, when he told me about the 17 pounds or whatever to go or 18 mm-hmm. pounds, um, he was like, Yeah, man, just fish and asparagus, you know. Mm-hmm. Oh, who the fuck does that? I was like, fuck that. <laughs> yeah, I think I think he had to come uh have to uh, get rid of a crazy amount of water too prior to that. Yeah, yeah he lost yeah. ten pounds of water uh, the day before or something like that. Yeah. I believe you got you got like you weigh in on like was it Wednesday night? Or was it Thursday? We had Thursday Thursday morning. Thursday morning, then you got till Friday morning pre judging, right? Yeah. That's like twenty four hours to play with. It's not like overnight, but yeah, I mean, well, he ended up looking good. I thought he looked really, really good. So it worked. Lucky one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He said he made it up to um <laughs> he said by final by finals he was 220. <laughs> I mean, I don't I don't doubt it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I he really big. don't doubt it. I mean, okay, listen. He's really a heavyweight. He's he's definitely a heavyweight. He's oh, not yeah. a light heavyweight. <laughs> he's not a light heavyweight. But it worked. I mean, shit, it worked, you know. I think to be in a, a stupor, you don't have to worry about making weight ever. Yeah. Yeah. That, <laughs> so that. Nice. I, I'm the only fucking guy that did. <laughs> I worried about it all the way until like a week out. My coach is like, oh, fuck this. We're going to feed you. Okay. <laughs> Who coached you, Joe? What happened? Who coached you? Justin Compton. Oh, okay. Good, good, good. Yeah. yeah. So, by you know, I'm all. We all we all have the same coach. I, I'm just oh, like shit, okay. I'm a wild man out here. <laughs> I'm just I'm, I'm just a nutcase. I, I I just go missing somewhere somewhere along prep. I just go I just go missing. <laughs> uh, and kind of like uh, uh, the, everything okay. I'm like uh, yeah. I'm I'm still alive. I'm I'm just I'm just in my head. You were busy as <laughs> fuck. You were getting all kinds of shit done, dude. Social media superstar. <laughs> No, I, I get, I get. You know, I take the uh, the amphetamines, the fentanyl. Well, yeah, I was, I was gonna, I, I was gonna say that. I didn't know if you wanted to share that or not. <laughs> to be honest, when I'm on, when I'm on this podcast, I feel like it's just us. I feel like nobody's watching. I feel like there's okay. no camera on. So yeah, I don't give a shit. Cut that out. Cut that out. Cut that out. <laughs> I, I just don't want people to start taking fentanyl and be like, oh. But yeah, but I get so like focused, bro. I do a million things, bro. I'm like almost to like I have two phones, so I'll pick up this phone and the laptop and I'll be like this fucking eating my meal and fucking jumping around. It's it's kind of crazy. It's kind of crazy. Well, let's try it now, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, but I was gonna say uh I was gonna say something about Zade. I forget. I, I was gonna say I, I think he would have been competitive against uh Josh actually. Um uh, I, I, I think I think Josh was uh he had too much muscle on him, like put him next to each other. Like, but I mean, shot for shot, I think Josh would just—it's just too much, too much mass. I Josh think, is a Compton guy too, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. You know, you know how some people look more impressive on Instagram. I, I never thought Josh was that big on Instagram, but then seeing him on stage, I'm like, this guy. I thought he was shorter, and I thought he was smaller. I thought he was shorter too. Yeah. yeah. It's like the way yeah. he's built. I really thought he was a lot uh, I thought he was a lot smaller if I'm being honest. And I see him in person I'm like this guy is pretty fucking big, you know. Social media is it's just not real life, bro. It's just it's just not real life. It's like it depends if you have show muscles like I got like shoulders and arms, right? You can always look like after a carb meal and a pump, bro, I could look like a fucking Olympian if I just take if I just show my arms and shoulders, right? Because it's like mm-hmm. show muscles. But on stage, the judges don't really give a fuck about arms and shoulders that much, as long as it's in the balance. They really want to see the tie-ins and the glutes and the back. And that's where, like, Joe really shines, right? In, in, in I was say, apparently, I look worse on social media. Well, <laughs> Every time someone I, yes, you, do. Person, you definitely like, do. 
Yeah, <laughs> like no man, you, you don't look like 100%. this in person. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Everybody Even... talks shit on the comment section. Hey man, this guy's not ready. He's like four weeks out. <laughs> no, no. People but, do but... that. To, you remember, buddy? People do that to me last, like last year. They did. Um, Nobody was nobody had my name in their mouth. Cause fuck, yeah. I never I've never done nationals. You hadn't either, right, Joe? You, no. you haven't done nationals for us? Yeah. No, I, I just did USA's and that was it. But that, that's, done. That's, <laughs> that's, that's one thing I hate though. Like I guess you have no choice but to go by pictures, but but take people by their word that if you were there, like Joe one handedly, like if I'm being yeah. honest. Same, uh, uh, stew one handedly, but in the comments, you'd be like, Oh, I, like you got to even, even me coming to Fit Nation and seeing Joe in person like six weeks out. And I, I was really hoping he was going to suck down the heavyweight. <laughs> and I see him, he's well, like, I never you know, told you, I was 235. <laughs> yeah, he's like, You know what? I look at him like, This is not what I see on, on social media. He was this fucking wide. I'm like, What the fuck? But you can't see that on his own body until you see him in person. And I'm like, what the fuck? And he's like, oh, I think I'm gonna do supers. And I'm like, uh, you sure? You don't want to do, uh, you don't want to do heavies? <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, could he have sucked down? Yes, but just to look worse. I, well, he- I mean, I, I I did suck down. I got down to 223, and I was ready, mm-hmm. but I was stringy as hell. Like uh, when I told you when I was 235 that day, you came out. Yeah, I, I told I was, I was talking to Paul and I was like, dude, I don't know. I have like maybe three more pounds on me, but I don't know where it's going to come from after that. And then uh, yeah. Justin afterwards told me like between like 232 and 223, all I did was get more and more depleted. Like my my look didn't change. I just got super flat. Well, that that's what a coach is good for, because you can't see that for yourself in real time. Mm-hmm. You know, like I could look back to pictures and be like, uh, I probably should have stopped uh, dieting. I probably should have stopped eating fish and fish, plain fish at this point. But you, you won't be able to see that because you get so caught up in whatever you you you're caught up in. But me, me and Paul was we we was talking we were like yeah he's definitely gonna win. I don't like to tell people they're gonna win because I feel like I don't yeah, know. Paul didn't tell me shit. Paul yeah. kept <laughs> Paul kept it from me the whole time because I'm not gonna tell this guy shit. And I kept you telling ready. Paul. I kept telling Paul. Yet. Though, I'm like, ready. I'm ready. <laughs> Well, I think that's smart because you want somebody to still have that 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 drive. You don't want somebody to be like, I'm going to win and just kind of like, you know, even if it's subconscious, you won't be yeah. as hungry if you feel like you're going to win by a landslide. You know, yeah, you're that's, gonna- what, that's what your friends are for. They're there to talk shit. They want to be your friends. That's, that's all that do. guy does. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. But uh, Paul, how's your how's your prep going? How, how many weeks? Yeah. Uh, four. Four. Oh, damn. That's good. Man. That's good. Starting, starting to get fatigued and shit. Starting to kick in, but yeah, no yeah. see it in your face, man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you get starting to feel it. it. I'm actually surprised you you made it to the to the podcast. I, I didn't think he was gonna make it. I was like, yeah, but I, I don't think he got the energy. I was I was good, bro. The only mm-hmm. thing I and if I was on, but my game don't come on till like one thirty. So I was like, oh, fuck it, I'll go. Yeah, okay, okay. But, right. Are you doing nationals after? Who me? Yeah, you are you uh what show are you doing? I'm doing week? a well I, I got I got my card uh I learned the records last year. So that's oh fuck. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, you're good, you're good. Okay. No, I'm doing a I'm doing a Legion's uh Legion's Masters. Oh shit, okay. Yeah, yeah. First my smart goal debut, so I've heard that's a really well run show, the Legion. I've heard I've heard, I've heard really good things about it too. I think uh, it's the know. same dude who puts on the Tahoe show, which is yeah. just an amateur. But yeah, like he just like does a bunch of stuff for the athletes, and he uh he like brings on cool acts and stuff. And a lot of dude, a lot of shows nowadays, fuck like by you were at the the Cal Pro right, the the, the amateur pro show there. Yeah, was, like was... that was like it was in a fucking hotel, you know, was... eighty bucks for tickets. Like, <laughs> what, are you, what are you getting for your money? I mean, it's pretty crazy. We got beef then, fucking too. That's what we got. That's what we got for money. <laughs> no, but um, the flex, the flex, flex pro, I think it was called. Just, yeah. Uh, yeah. Can you guys see? You guys can see uh somebody yeah. have a shoe loose. I think Tim. Yeah, Tim Budishan. I yeah. beat him. 
<laughs> that'd be him and Tampa. <laughs> he was kind of off though. He didn't look like that. Yeah, he looks pretty. He looks pretty insane here, condition wise. Holy shit! Very good. You guys saw the results already? Is yeah. it over? Already? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just finished up. Well, it's Nathan and Regan, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nathan's gonna. I thought Nathan was gonna take it. He did. Nathan, take it. Uh, Regan started fading. Yeah. Regan looks like Regan again. I gotta be honest, man. I, I really like Regan's physique. I really like his yeah. physique, but. It doesn't matter what you like. It matters who brings it, right? You know, it's like I like Flex, uh, Flex Wheel. I always liked his physique better than everybody else. But I mean, he lost to Ronnie and and, and um, Dorian just because he just didn't, you know, he didn't bring it. Hey, go go well, to that front is... double there. Go to that front yeah. double with with the two of them. The two of them. Yeah, right there. So I don't know. If he's, he's not really putting his arm in the post properly, but. I just do not like his flow. Like he's got a, a small waist, but it's not super small. He's got like last, but they're not super sweepy. You know, there's there's a bunch of features there, but they're not like whoa. Uh, he's got he's got a good back shot, right? But then you look at Nathan, and there's just like shit popping off of him everywhere. You know? I think I it's think just Regan, a white guy and a black guy thing. <laughs> I think. Yeah, they got different. I think Regan's last spread looks good. I think his side poses look good. And his uh-huh. back look good, but Nathan was definitely was definitely harder. So even if Nathan's back isn't as good, he was harder. So that, that's always going to give you a, an advantage. But Nathan's detail is so crazy too. Yeah, like, and I, he's he one of those guys. Certain way, it looks so so good. Yeah, he pops. Like I've heard in person, like like he looks fucking crazy. Because like I don't know if you guys have ever seen Andrew Jackson in person, but like. It's, it's the same thing with Nathan, apparently. Like, shit just pops off of him the way that it just doesn't on, like, you know, most people. Bro, I saw Nathan at, when I I moved here, like, 2016, I want to say. And what year did Nathan win the Cal? That was 2017? Yeah, something like that. So, I was, at the time, I was working at LA Fitness. And then, literally, I'm doing lap pull downs on my break. <laughs> and I look to my right. And it's Nathan and Matt Jensen. And Nathan is doing the pull. I'm like, holy fuck. Is that Nathan and Matt at LA Fitness? Holy shit. Like, did you guys pay? Did like, we paid? I was like, <laughs> we got the, you guys coming back? You're like, yeah, we'll be here a couple of days. I was like, bro, you don't, you guys don't got to pay if you come back here. Just <laughs> <laughs> and I was, they were like, oh, thank you. And, and I took pictures and shit. But Nathan looked like the way he kind of looked like a bigger version of Tonio at the time. You see how Tonio muscle bellies pop? He looked oh, like, yeah, I know. <laughs> 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 well, well, if Tonya was about, I don't know, two, his coach said he was like 212, 213. Well, Nathan is what, 240, 250? Yeah. You know, not that much taller, maybe two inches taller. So you could imagine he's a lot bigger than Tonya with similar muscle bellies. That, that just, it looks crazy. It looks insane, you know. He had a T-shirt on, and you could see every muscle popping out of the T-shirt, and 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 I think he was smaller back then. I, I don't even. I think he's bigger now, if anything, or denser. Yeah. So yeah, he he looks pretty fucking impressive, you know. He not Tony that t- did not look very big when he was just like wearing a sweatsuit and shit. Like Bro, he, just, he looked like an average guy who works out. Not average, but like it, mm-hmm. it's just crazy. What's on his day? Honestly, he looked like a like a college football player or a high school football player. Yeah, yeah. Like walking around with the pack and the in the jumpsuit. Yeah, he exactly. peels off. You talking about Tony? Yeah, yeah. Tony. Oh, okay, yeah, I can totally see that. What, what you guys think about Blessing, man? I think he's done, bro. I think the fact that he can't do anything with his legs is going to be killing him. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I don't think he can at all because that injury. It look now it looks like one leg is growing and the other leg isn't growing because yeah, that yeah. that one freaky leg it can do like. He can like invert his leg and do like weird shit with it. Okay. I don't think I don't think you can put on muscle if 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 your leg if your knees do do those kind of tricks. You know I don't. <laughs> I think about all he could try is just load it up with a shitload of oil or something and just do leg hey, tests. Uh, people, I don't. It, people have done it before. Yeah. Well, yeah. It, it, I, I, I good, think but... he's done. I think the New York Pro was the pinnacle of his career, and that's it. 
Well, what if that was with George? But from what I hear, George was wasn't very responsive. But I mean, uh, George, George brought him in, in his best, I guess. I don't know. I think I I think he needs to uh to go maybe try try out all the tricks like Stu said. <laughs> I think I think his physique looks really nice and flows good, but at this level, it's just it's just. It's a pro level. It's a high, you know. It's a very high level of competition. You can't I just, have a huge weakness like that. If you got weak legs, unless you're like, you know, just a name that people like, like Kamal or something, you can't get away with that. No, it, it's just not gonna. It's just not gonna work. And like his his upper body looks even more like developed, so it's only creating a bigger and bigger imbalance. Yeah, he 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 even I feel like his upper body is still improving really fast. That's what I'm saying. Like his the legs aren't doing nothing. Yeah, that's not gonna it's not gonna work. Uh, that's not gonna fly. And um I feel like there's been a lot of news since the last podcast. Like a, a lot of news to cover. Now we got um we got Ian retired at 32. Oh, that's a trip, dude. He's only 32, huh? Damn. Oh, I didn't even realize he was that fucking young, you know. Yeah. My the only thing, like I, I feel like there's no right age to retire. It, it goes by feel, whatever you're feeling. My only thing is that he technically hasn't hit his prime because I don't believe 32 is your prime. Well, 35, huh? Well, to be honest, kind of depends on how fast you push it to get there. You know, good like, point. I'd, I'd say Nick Walker is probably pretty close to his prime. He's not even 30 yet, you know? Yeah. Um, but people, like guys nowadays, and you know, talking about like my generation, our generation. Hey, Joe, how old are you? 29. Okay, yeah. So like, like we're, the guys who are like in their 20s and shit, they're pushing pretty hard right now. I don't know if they're going to have 15-year careers. I don't I don't know if all, all of the 15-year career. Um uh, but because if you look at Ian, like I don't I don't know what kind of shit like how what kind of drug he takes, but like the last couple of years he wasn't like progressing or improving really, and yeah. he was like kind of plus or minus of five pounds in any direction. Had some good shows, had some bad peaks, whatever. Looked great, you know. He's obviously one of the best in the world still, but like if you're not like you don't have the momentum like continuing to improve and shit like. Uh, and and you're pushing yourself, and maybe you don't really want to be doing it. You're not passionate like you see. Why would you? Why would you keep doing that? You know? Yeah, yeah. And I can, have kids, and fuck, man, I'd get out too. What What I will say is, if if you're not passionate and all in, which it sounds like he said he's been contemplating this for a couple of years, I think it's hard to make progress if you're not fully fully in it, and um. <laughs> He we said had forward he, training legs the other day, and I was like, who fucking does shit like this, bro? I was like, I swear to God, this wasn't working. I wouldn't be fucking doing this stupid shit. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, imagine you trying to train legs. In the back of your head, you're like, bro, this sucks. I don't really want to do this. How big are your, are your legs going to get? You know? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, so. And what can he, yeah. what can he still improve on himself, honestly? Like, he's, he's as big as, like, he's competing at, like, 260 plus. He's mm -hmm. peeled. Like he can't really fix muscle separation. That's kind of a weakness of his. But mm -hmm. he can't really fix that. You know. Mm -hmm. What can, no, you, what can you keep on doing? He's declining too in placing. So, well, I I I don't see. I think that's why he even wants to walk away because like if he gets one or two places better max, like is that even going to make a difference? <laughs> Not really. At this point, the people that are beating him. Are beating him strictly because of genetics, right? Like, yeah, yeah. Like, the shape and everything is, you know, good. even when he was getting seventh place, the top six were just genetically better. They weren't like out conditioning him by a landslide. They weren't out muscling him. It was more so structure, shape, flow, things like that. Things that he can't really control. And then now he moved down further because you had Samson and Andrew, guys with crazy genetics move into that that lineup so it's and like the only hope is like if they're off bad like i mean andrew wasn't peel in in texas right but he still won handily just because he's so good yeah um, mm -hmm. 
That must got to be really depressing seeing shit like that. You know? I agree. Even even at the O, at the O, Andrew, Andrew beat him at the O again. And Andrew was even more off, you know? He was sick. He was softer. And he still yeah. beat him. So uh, it, it, it kind of makes sense. If you're going to risk your health, I guess, some people are okay with getting, you know, outside of the top 10, right? But realistically, could he have made the top 10 again with these new guys? It would have been really hard. And to risk your health and you have a baby on the way and you have other things you want to do to place outside of the top 10 might not be worth it for you, you know, if if you're already yeah. not gung-ho about bodybuilding, you know? He, he could continue a pro career at about, like, the, the performance that he's been sustaining for the last couple of years, but... I mean, he's probably got plenty of other business opportunities that he can go and pursue, you know, that are not going to beat him up as bad. If he didn't have any other options, then he'd probably keep on competing. Uh, yeah. but, but I'm sure he's got things set up for himself. He's smart. Well, he, he he's also um, he's also a really good coach, even though he hasn't been coaching. Yeah. Um, he is a really good coach. Um, but I will say... Also, every time he wins his show, <laughs> he just gets a bunch of shit talk anyways, right? Like, oh, my God. Not... <laughs> so, yeah. it's not like he gets to win and feel good and everybody's like, yeah, let's go, Ian. Like, he wins at his own hometown, right? He went, I mean, uh, home country. He wins in Toronto, and everybody's like, oh, man, shit. Oh, look at his back. Oh, look at this. You know, look at his calves. Oh, come on. Like, like anybody has calves these days. <laughs> <laughs> And they're like, so if you can't enjoy your wins, you can't enjoy your losses, then what the what the fuck do you enjoy? You know, I'm I'm not mad at it. Like selfishly, I would love to see him compete just because I like bodybuilding. So I like to see good bodybuilders compete. But I mean, it's probably probably actually probably a good decision, really. You know, probably a good decision. Let me see. He he's already uh he's already down. I think he says it somewhere. He's down a few pounds. He said it's like five to ten pounds already. Yeah, like he, that. Looks, he looks pretty. Uh, he looks good. He looks fit, you know. Well, you know, it's he looks take good. a while for that to come off him. Though. He's yeah, got dude. a lot of muscle on him. You know, you know what people say that bodybuilders say. He looks healthy. Yeah, you look healthy, bro. <laughs> How dare yeah, you? <laughs> don't don't tell me he's shredded. <laughs> don't, don't tell me I look healthy because you're trying to tell me I look small. I feel like you know, <laughs> Paul, Paul was telling me when he retires and stuff, he wants to walk around like a solid 260 lean. I was like, dog, you really don't know how unhealthy that is. I was like, you motherfucker, you're down to at least 220. At least. Shit. Oh. I mean, with Paul's metabolism. Benny, next to that big fucker, dog, I can't be anything less than 260. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let Benny. me do the, the walking around all big and shit for a while. <laughs> I'll be honest, like like when I stop, I just get fat, bro. Like, like there was there was one year I took off of bodybuilding, and I was two eighty, just fatter. It was <laughs> I can't like I came off of gear. I came, I came to TRT, felt great, and I came off of TRT, and I felt didn't feel great, but I felt fine. You no, know? like maybe I maybe I'm one of those guys who could just be cold turkey, and then within like three months, I was like, you know what. I don't think I want to come off TRT anymore. And then I went back. <laughs> it's like, you don't feel bad, but you feel a little, feel a little strange, man. It's, it's a little strange. After all these years on test, bro, like not having, not having high tests, you just feel not like yourself, you know? It, it, it's kind of weird. I, I wanted to watch like rom-coms and shit. <laughs> Ooh, no. I want to watch that shit while watching. watch it. <laughs> I could I couldn't watch like I couldn't watch like violent movies. Oh yeah, I don't I don't want to watch that. I don't want to watch that. So I'm like, this is this is weird, man. I I, I don't want to be that guy. So I got <laughs> <laughs> but I was just 280, chubby looking, soft looking and shit. So it's not a I'm not one of those guys who gets off and gets ripped and lean and smaller. I just look like a shittier bodybuilder, basically. <laughs> Same. <laughs> I'm, look, I'm looking forward to that someday. Just being no, like two twenty, two fifteen, going on hikes and shit. You know, it's gonna be fun. Like just compared to what we're doing now, it's gonna feel so good. You, yeah. I don't even remember what that feels like. Honestly. Yes, 
<laughs> so the same thing, man. I can't remember how that how it feels. Yeah. Yeah, it's not it's oh, not oh. I was sitting next to Jalissa yesterday, Paul, and I looked at her and I was like, you know, it's been a while since I've gotten fucked up. <laughs> and I just hear what Stu <laughs> just celebrated. Like, yeah, I'm, I think it's coming. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I gotta wanna go get fucked up. <laughs> that was the most nice. I wanna get hung over. <laughs> no, you don't. Yeah. I, don't. <laughs> I just went to a podcast the next day. <laughs> yeah. Oops. <laughs> I mean, the, the the fucked up part of it, every time I go to Vegas for USA is I want to like enjoy myself after. But when you're depleted and hydrated, it, it's kind of hard to enjoy yourself. Like I, I I went for drinks and then I started getting the hiccups. And yeah. I was sweating, I was sweating all night with a full stomach, and I'm like, I, I just want to go home, man. I, I don't want to do this. Awful. Yeah. <laughs> I want to I can't do this. So it's like you, you gotta you gotta you gotta wait like a couple of weeks before you can even celebrate, really. Bro, I didn't even enjoy my food after. My stomach was so torn up mm. from the fucking like I had a piece of carrot cake and it just fucked me up like no, nothing else, bro. <laughs> it, then I had a photo shoot the next day because you know the overalls and shit. And I was like, fuck, man. So I got up super early just to sell a twelfth like an hour. <laughs> fucked me up. Yeah. Hey, scroll down a bit on the left there. Is that a uh, Ron? No, a little lower, lower below that. Is that that Ron Gordon dude? Oh, I think so. RPG. Those are fucking huge. Yeah, that's him. He looks yeah. really impressive in person. You know the tall guy. Yeah, he looks. He looks big as fucking person. He does. I said that's him in the elevator. And I was like, man, that's a big fucking man. <laughs> what is the deal with him? Why is, why is he never like coming into his own? Because he always looks insane. It's just is he not too tall. He he yeah he's he's pretty tall. Um, who's his coach? Think uh, Cycle. Well, but Cycle does his training. Does he do his programming as well? I don't know. I think well, so. He was with the uh, Kuwait guys for a little bit. Oh. Uh, Abdullah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I I don't feel like it should be that hard for him to put it together because he doesn't get fat. He seems like he gets in shape easy. He just doesn't come in full and shredded. He comes in kind of flatty, flattish looking. Cause my boy, my boy Henry beat him at at USA's, and he's technically bigger than Henry, but Henry peaked better than him, so Henry appeared bigger than him. Which I'm like, huh? That's oh, true. Henry, um, fuck, what's his what's his last name? Henry Jackson. Jackson. Yeah, Henry yeah. Jackson. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's dude. really nice, dude. He, I, I met him in Tampa. He's really cool. I think I think he has a good physique too. I just I just think he needs more muscle, mostly mostly in the lower body, right? Mostly. Bro, he needs to get away from Phil Riz. He's been with that guy forever, and he has made he, like very little progress. Well, breaking news: he actually, he actually did leave him. Oh, damn! <laughs> yes, yes, okay. <laughs> yes. You, you know what's fucked up? I don't want to admit this, but I've been telling, I've been telling him the same thing too. Yeah, I was saying No, no, no offense to to Phil, but I just didn't. No offense to Phil, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you said offensive. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. No, it's, I, I just didn't think. Uh, I I didn't think it was a good fit. I just didn't think it was a good fit. Uh, I feel like he's making more progress, even doing his own thing right now. Uh, I, I'm gonna try to connect him to Compton and see if that's that's something he wants. I was gonna to say do. what I really like about Justin. Like he learned my shit right away. He learned yeah. Paul pretty quick. Um, I, I think he learned you pretty quick too. Just the the he end did. part for you. He, I like Justin a lot. Yeah, well, he he catches on really quick. Right off the bat, he's like, "Okay, I I I see your body is gonna be tougher to get in shape. Like, bear with me, but you gonna have to fucking starve. Like, it is what it is." Yeah, yeah, I mean, that sounds about right. Because that's that's what I was basically doing. Just uh, it is what it is. I mean, you can complain about it, or you can you know some people have to eat eight thousand calories to gain a pound. Some people have to fucking starve. It is, but it's crazy, man. Like what his approach is, is it reminds like when I was doing my own thing. Like he always like say he'll put on a couple pounds here and there, and then he'll just continue pushing food. He'll push more and more and more and more. Yeah, and then yeah, and he'll he'll starve you, but like when he has to, you know. But it's just like it's it's like two extremes. But yeah. I mean, it works for my body. <laughs> it it does work, but while you're doing it, right, you're like, damn, is this the right call? But it always is, right. Like when he pushes the food up, I'm like, hmm, should I be eating more food right now? I feel pretty, pretty big. 
And the same thing when he pulls it down, you're like, oh, he's going to give me a refeed. I know he's going to give me a refeed because I'm just, I lost all this weight. I'm lean. And then he pulls the food even more. You're like, holy fuck, man. <laughs> I, I told Paul what the, when he decided to pull me down even farther, I, I was like, what the <laughs> fuck? Okay. You guys know, um, uh, what's his name? Paul J. Uh, Garrett Danji. No, I'm not sure. Oh, yeah. he's, uh, he's he's coached by Compton as well. He pulled him down from like this was at nationals last year. Uh, he pulled him down from like two eighty almost to the heavyweights. Oh, I think it or no wait fuck it, I think it was like two sixty five or two seventy just mm-hmm. so far just like in one prep one go like twenty weeks. He, yeah, so yeah that's that's what he did for me. I was uh, two seventy and he pulled me down to two twenty three the lowest. Cool. Yeah. So, Fuck so that. <laughs> sometimes yeah, bro, I was I, like six weeks out. I was like when Beatty saw me, I was fucked up. <laughs> I was like, I was not okay. <laughs> yeah, some some people some people need that, you know. I think I think Joe needs that to a point. I think I need that. I don't think you and Paul need that per se. Honestly, I, I think you and Paul can come in fuller and look you even better. But I think a lot of guys need to really, really suck down before they can let up a little bit. Well, the first time you get in really good condition, and Garrett hadn't been like peeled before. The first time you get in really good condition, you just gotta you, like, you gotta you're gonna go. lose tissue. Sorry, it's just, it's just gonna happen. Yeah. Like, and the next time you do it, it's gonna be easier, and you'll be able to hold on to more. You'll like be able to eat more going to the show. It just takes like years to build up a metabolism and, and like. Like you'll have muscle on you, and you gotta hold it for a few years before it really is gonna stick through a hard prep. You know, I'm. I think I'm kind of getting to the point now where like I can, because like during the USA's prep and the New York prep this year, I was like, we were doing like refeeds on average like once a week. Um, I got a fast metabolism, so that's part of it. But also like if I didn't do that, I just start getting like flat and I start withering away, and that tissue hadn't been on me long enough to stay. But I think next year I'm going to be able to push harder for longer, like stay flatter for longer and dig out a little further. Because, like, I just – I wasn't hard like some of the other guys were this year. Um, yeah. I think, yeah, um, my first full prep that I prepped with Compton for, like, a full – I think a full year, I went from 280 and I went down to about 230. That's what – how much pounds is that? 50? 50 pounds? 50. Yeah, but I, I should have been a heavyweight. Uh, I should have been a heavyweight that 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 show probably. And then um, what was the other year? Well, this year I started at like three hundred, and I went down to two. I did the Cal at two fifty five, but I ended up doing mm-hmm. the USA at two forty three. So it's still and and I think this was the first time I I would say I was in I was in legit shape. I was in good enough shape. Like yeah, you, know, you were good there. But but I was definitely flat. But I I felt like that was the only way for me to get in that kind of shape. But I, I think I could have filled out more. But I think I, I think I, I needed to achieve that that amount of condition for the. You've done it now. You've done it now. It's gonna be easier next time. It won't be easy, but it will be easier. I think it's so. Never easy uh, with you, boost, dude. <laughs> and and I think once you're okay with suffering and not feeling like something is wrong, right? Because the first time I felt that, I'm like, well, this can't be normal. I, I feel like maybe I should be eating more. I don't think I don't think this is normal. And then when I talk to people, they're like, yeah, I feel pretty fucking shitty. I'm like, okay, so <laughs> you become okay with, okay, this is okay. I shouldn't be concerned that I'm my training feels like I'm not even training. That's okay. Yeah. Hey, the training is going to gonna be shit. That's okay. And I'm like, okay, so I can have shit. Okay. Then, then you have to be okay with that for you to, you know. So next time it's gonna be like, no biggie. I, I'll train legs and I'll feel no pump and I'll feel like shit. That's cool. Not the whole prep, but the last three, four weeks, it's yeah. okay to work out and feel like nothing happening. You still gotta just work out, you know. The next time you feel that, you'll be like, all right, I feel like shit. Okay, yeah, something's That's happening it. finally. It's it's working. Happening. Yeah, something's it's working. working. Yeah. But but <laughs> one, one thing also I learned is you have to. I don't like to say for people to train lighter, but depending on how your training is usually, you might have to because sometimes it doesn't make sense. If I squat six plates for a set, the rest of my workout is complete shit. So now what I got from that squat, 
I don't think is worth trading it for doing leg press and doing pendulum squats and doing extensions because once I hit that sixth place, I'm done. So now I'm bullshitting the rest of the workout. I don't think that's conducive to having good legs. I think I'll be better off saying maybe I'll do four plates for just one, maybe one top set and then get most of my volume from the pendulum and the hacks and the extensions and the presses. You know, that's something I, I noticed. It just makes more sense rather than say, oh, I lifted all this heavy weight on squat, but now I can barely train quads, right? Because I don't you, even. Uh, you train with a lot more volume, don't you know? Oh, you're talking about uh, Paul and, and Joe and me? Uh, no, you, no, you, buddy. Or, yeah, I mean, you guys, you guys too. And... I, I was doing all. I, I was doing like a um, high intensity type training, but then I was doing a lot of sets. So I would warm mm -hmm. up, do my feeder sets, and I would do three working sets for like five exercises. And that's just overkill. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's decent now. Huh? Yeah. You know, just because you can do it or you're, you're highly motivated enough to do it, I don't think it benefits your physique. I think once you stimulate, like how many times can you stimulate upper chest? You do two heavy working sets of incline press. Do you really need to do two more exercises and three more sets of each? Are you getting more upper chest at that point? I don't think so at this point. I think once you do two working sets for incline, you can maybe do one more incline movement or you can move on to flat, you know? So I just yeah. think overkill and it was bringing my fatigue so high that now it would it would bleed into the next day and the next day and the next day and I'll find myself feeling shittier and now when I'm doing cardio I can't even give my all now I'm hanging on to the thing while doing cardio and it's just my fatigue is too high for me to manage right and well, I don't if, if you're actually training hard and taking the, all those sets to failure and like you know if you know how to do that then yeah it's it's probably gonna be overkill except for like some people but a lot of people just don't know how to take a set that far so they need to do three four sets of everything. Because they're all, they think they're going 10 out of 10, but it's really like seven and a half, eight. It's like, that's the only way they can get enough stimulus. Uh, I agree. I, I, I think that's why maybe it worked for a few years. Because I think as a beginner, you can do that. I think a beginner, you yeah. need more volume because you can't connect with the muscle enough to really push it that hard. But as you get bigger and stronger yeah. and get a better connection, my volume just keeps going down and down and down to the point I'm like, Bro, like at this point, like I, I've been doing like four to six working sets, and I'm like, that's that's just all I need. I just don't need anymore. Yeah. I can't, I can't recover. You know, personally, my my training style is completely the opposite. So, like for like the California when I won that um, in 2022, I did the build up to a top set and walk away. For that top set yeah. was a better set, the heaviest load. And then for this show, we went to. Uh, Pretty much two failure sets because I, I started training like this like eight weeks out because stuff started hurting me like my tendons and stuff and my knees and all that so we volumized everything somewhere between 10 and 15 reps two to three uh working sets but we hit failure on at least two of them so like that first set we hit failure the second set we lose like two or three reps but like keep keep the weight the same. Keep the weight the same, and try to try to match the number on the. On the and we, we did a uh, we did five or six movements yeah. depending on the body part, mm -hmm. and um, my body, like, there was a there was a, a moment in my prep where I was getting tighter, but my weight was the same for three weeks straight. He pushed cardio up, he took food away, and I grew training that way. But I changed the training because yeah. of how my body felt. And um, I've carried that into this little rebound phase. I'm just exploding. But, yeah. I mean, the foundational strength was, like, put, like, in the practice already. Like, I was squatting six plates on the Smith and all that stuff, mm -hmm. four and a quarter on incline press and stuff. And after a while, she just started hurting. We backed off the weight, up the volume, and my, my body just responded like crazy. So with, with those, like, heavy lifts, were you – what kind of rep range were you working on? Was it low? Like we always got like between ten? like eight, eight and twelve reps. Oh, okay. So it wasn't like a like five rep sets and stuff. I always try to keep between eight and twelve. Yeah. Um, I'm actually surprised you guys could recover from that because from watching you guys training, it looks like you guys go to failure on all those all those sets too. Yeah. So. Well, right now, since I'm so I have so much food, I do mm -hmm. three sets, three working sets, and I lose reps each time by like two, three reps. Yeah. But we, we we shoot for 15, 12 to 15 that first set. And yeah. I don't go I don't go below 10. So 
depending on where I feel that first set, I'll gauge the next one. But when I uh, when I train legs or back, uh, right now, like since after the show, anytime I go above, let's say I do two working sets, three movements, or so four movements. If I go, so that's eight, six to eight working sets. Anytime I go above six to eight working sets, I feel this immense fatigue. Like the way you feel like a week out after you're done with the steer mill, I feel that feeling and I just crash. I'm like, holy fuck. So I just, I just can't seem to push the volume any higher than that, man. I just, but also my, I, I, I do, I try to not focus too much on the weight because then I just get, then, you know, your form starts to change and you get anxious and all this weird shit. But I, I think I still train maybe heavier than I should sometimes. But then I just get yeah. this nice fatigue, man. We, we just try whatever weights on the bar. Like, see, we've been going to different gyms, right? So you can't really gauge, like, your progress through the machines or the weights you're using. So we yeah. just try to – whatever movement it is, we'll obviously do the same kind of approach as far as volume and stuff. But yeah. we just try to make the sets as difficult as possible, whether that's slowing it down, squeezing, like doing a pause rep at the bottom, whatever I can – how I can make myself fail at the rep range I'm trying to fail. You're fail. And then if it's too light, you just add a little bit or acclimate to the set. So say I'm trying to fail at 15 reps, but I'm like, when I'm doing the set, it's my working set. I'm like, well, fuck, I think I can get at least 17 to 20. I'll, I'll keep going and I'll count that. And on the next set, I'll just add a little more weight so I fail a little bit on the lower end of the rep ranges. Okay. And so we'll stuff like I that. I used to be way more strict with like logging all my weights and trying to beat everything mm -hmm. every day. But like, I, I've started to just do that. I mean, I know roughly what weights I'm using on all my movements yeah. to get to a certain rep range. But like, you know, I've been doing sets of leg press with like seven, eight plates on there. So like 10 or whatever. Right. And just like, just going until I can't anymore. I'm not counting past like 15. I just like the goal is to just force a bunch of blood into my my life. Exactly, right? that's, that's what I'm saying. So I, I don't really, I don't care about what I'm. I'm like, I'm gonna go until I like, get squished, basically. Um, yeah. And the, like the intensity is the goal. The failure is the goal. The rep, the reps are like sometimes on the heavy heavier stuff. I'm a little more focused on the progression, but like with a lot of the like the exercise later in my my workouts, so I'm just I don't, I don't give a shit. I just I'm going for a feeling. I'm going for failure, you know, rather than just numbers, numbers, numbers. Because I get yeah. lost in it sometimes. And I then, how much time you can keep that muscle under the tension? So, say me and Paul, we plan on our say our last set. We we get under that ten rep mark. And say I get eight. Right away, I'll be like, Paul, drop a plate, and I'll do a drop set to extend the time. Okay. Of the set. So, right. but I, but I'm not losing the feeling of the contraction. Like, so I'm not just throwing the weight. So I'll keep the tempo the same, and get another like ten reps controlled and squeezed and uh, extend that set. So I don't waste a set. Yeah, as long as, long as you don't lose the force of the trees, you still need to be using a significant load. You're not going to be stimulating shit with like a, you know, a fifty pound dumbbell if you're doing presses or something, right? I don't yeah. care how hard you squeeze your packs; it's not going to do shit. If you're a big dude like we are, right? But yeah. you know, if, if, if you usually press the 150s, you could do like the 120s or something, and mm -hmm. slow it down and make it hard and like you know lift like Justin Shire does. <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, just make the reps difficult. Yeah. Uh, when I started, when I started uh, following like Matt Jansen and his clients, maybe like a. Uh what 2015 maybe when he started getting popular I, yeah. I started i started logging everything like it was in my notes i would log everything on my lifts and i would progress and progress and progress and i made good gains um but i still feel like i was getting stronger faster than i was getting bigger and i don't think as a bodybuilder that's a good trade-off i think you should be getting bigger faster than getting stronger it's almost like hard doing the lower weight the lower reps too you know Exactly, exactly. And then um, what I noticed is that progressive overload is great for a beginner. I wasn't a beginner at the time, but I think it's great for a beginner, even intermediate. You, you get to a point, even if your form is perfect, it's, it's almost not worth it, you know, because 
you start doing side laterals, even let's say you're doing perfect form with 70s or 80s on side oh. laterals. Where the fuck do you go from there? Like, I would start to just fill it all on my traps. And my form is good, but <laughs> as a cute dog. And, and, and my form is good, but at some point I'm like, even if my form is good, I, I'm just not feeling, I'm not connecting. Same with curls. I could do perfect form, you know, let's say with 80s. But I just was feeling too much, you know, my tendons and forearms. I think there's a limit where it just, you can't just continue to progress and wait forever and continue, you know, you, you almost have to find different ways. And I find that my pumps now kind of let me know that I'm doing a, a good job with the workout more so than the amount of weight. There's a balance. Like I'm not going to be curling 10 pounds, right? So I'm not going to be the guy that says, just make the 10 pounds feel heavier. It's like, I mean, how, how heavy can you make 10 pounds feel? Maybe you can make 40 pounds or 50 pounds feel heavy. But well, that's you, what Stu was saying. Like you can only yeah. pull back so far before it's useless. But exactly. So that's one thing. Progression has has a have limit. And I remember I had Matt Jansen on my, on my podcast uh, during COVID, maybe 2020. And I was asking him, I was asking him about progressive overload. I was like, you think that's the only way to train? He's like, listen, I'm never going to tell somebody how to train. If you ask me for advice, I'll, I'll, I'll let you know my best advice for where you're at. But he's like, there's just, there's just no right way. You know, like there's ways that are more, maybe if, if you want to prevent injury, I can tell you, like you said, train like Justin Shire. That's probably the best way to train as far as staying healthy and, you know, and, and still making really good progress. Right. Can you make progress training like branch? I'm sure you could. But the trade off, where, where's the trade off with that? So he was like, "Yeah, I'm not gonna try to convince anybody to train any kind of way." And you can't, even if you tried, you know, you can't convince Justin t- to train faster. He just likes to train slow. I thought, you know, or Nick, that's just like how, how they like to train. They wasn't gonna train like that. So what I took from that is that just just trying to progress all the time. I was getting anxious. I would go to the gym and I'm staring at the weight. And I'm like, "Oh my god, this is just." I would be nauseous the whole time thinking that do I have to squat more than six plates? How the fuck am I going to do that today? Like, I, I don't think I got that in me. How to, and you'll, and you'll try it. Maybe you'll do it, but you'll feel like shit. Your lower back hurts, your knee hurts. You don't feel shit on your quads. At that point, what, what the fuck are you doing? Even if you did get eight reps or 10 reps, still feels like shit, you know? So at, at some think, point, progressing. I think John Meadows did it really well. Like, the way that he started to balance. I started to watch more of his stuff after he yeah. passed away, but like he does a great job of balancing. Like, yeah, you need to train fucking hard. And he's training super hard in all of this, all of his videos and stuff, right? But yeah. like, he also he has like you know intensifiers and stuff. He has different ways to make shit difficult rather than just doing heavy stuff. You know, he has like his his overloaded like lateral flaps or whatever it's called, you know, there's little, little <laughs> tricks and stuff. I, I, I forget like the, the dumbbell. The, the penguin lateral lateral. Thing. Yeah. The penguins. Yeah. Yeah. I like those. They're really good and they don't hurt. You know, if I, yeah. if I'm trying to fucking jerk a heavy dumbbell up with a, with a heavy side lateral, my, my shoulders going to start hurting. This feels great though. And I could do it with like eighties and just burn them out. Just, yeah. I never used to do shit like that. Uh, and now I throw it in here and there because you're right. You can't just, you know, put more weight on. You got to, you got to get a little more clever. Yeah. Um, and, you know, adding in more volume for me personally doesn't really help. I think it just kind of, like you were saying, digs me into a deeper hole because, um, you know, we, we know how to train hard. We, we can't just do more of the hard shit necessarily. It's you have to make the hard stuff harder. Not just do more of it, <laughs> you know. I think I think there has to be a huge part of your training that's instinctive. I don't think you can follow any program a hundred percent to the T. I think you have to add your own feedback and be really instinctive. I actually, if, think- if you know, if you know, if you have instincts, yes. But if, yeah. I mean, like we we probably all coach people here, right? Like I'm I'm telling my clients to just fucking take your sets to failure because they're like beginner intermediate level. They don't. They don't know yet. They don't get it yet. They don't have a feel for what their bodies can handle. A lot of them don't even know how to take a set all the way there. No, so. no. I mean, not even close. I had one client. I won't say where he's from because I feel like he's going to watch the podcast. But um, if I say what gym he came to, he'll know too. But he visited America 
and he came to one of the gyms that I train at, and we did. I won't even say the body part because he'll know again. So we we, we trained. <laughs> we trained. Know. Again. <laughs> he, he's gonna know. God, he's like, like talking about me. I'm like, no, but we trained, and I was like, okay, now we're done with the warm ups. Let's do a working set. He said, yeah, I just did my working set. I said, no, he didn't. Let, let, let's do it again. Let me just see. He does his working set again. I was like, <laughs> that was failure. He said, yeah, yeah. I'm like, <laughs> bro, that wasn't even. Dude, me, me and Paul talked about that, the instinctive training. Like, you have bro. to be a certain kind of, like, you have to have a certain mindset. Like, are you really being, yeah. are you being a bitch or are you listening to your body? Bro. Because you have to know the difference. <laughs> but it wasn't even in a ball field. This man had, like, 10 reps. That wasn't even a warm-up set. Literally, we didn't, it wasn't curls. But let's say you're doing curls and you kind of like this. Like what the fuck was that? Like, what, slow you down, know? did struggle, nothing. Bro, you didn't slow down. You didn't break a sweat. It was, it was worse than the world. Like I swear, you guys warm up sets look more intense than that. I was baffled, and I was like, "This how you've been training?" And recently, we, we was talking. He's like, "Bro, my training is so different. Now. I'm going to full failure." And he sends me a picture. Um, he sent me a video of him doing uh, pull downs, and I'm like, "Well, that was fairly." He's like, "Oh, I didn't get the last couple of reps." Man, that's pretty convenient that you cut out the last couple reps, huh? Uh, like, <laughs> send me another one. Still have to send me another video. I'm like, bro, we we got to work on this failure thing. That's just not fair. So you you have to be yeah, you have to be uh advanced enough to understand what's going on. But I I don't feel like I feel like I knew how to train a failure. Uh, maybe it was football. I don't, I felt like I was training a failure since I was a teenager. You know. But everybody... I think some people just have that, and some people just don't. Yeah. Like, like yeah. if you if you played like football or something in high school, right? You you're probably it. gonna know how to go hard. I, I didn't play football, but like some people just have that edge. Like they want to work and work as hard as they can. And yeah. then some people just I don't know. I don't know if you can teach it even. Um, and I know I know with football, sure, we used to they throw you know like three plates on the on the bench. And uh, there was always guys that were stronger. So, you know, who who can match that rep? You know, who can match the reps? Yeah. You know what I mean? So it kind of forces you to go into that phase and try to reach those numbers in a sense. Yeah, so fucking football. You wait around with your boys, huh? uh, if, if you go slinging weights around with your buddies, like, fuck yeah, you're going to give it all you got. Yeah. I'm going to leave. I want to look like a bitch. <laughs> I mean, with football, we went so beyond failure, it was probably doing – more negative than positive at that point. But you learn, you <laughs> learned what it was like. like you yeah, learned yeah. how to work. I, I don't think a lot of kids know how to, like, they didn't play sports in high school. They just went straight into the gym because their favorite TikTok dude did it. Yeah. And, nowadays, yeah. doing it. Yeah. and, like, they, they just don't, no one ever taught them. Or their, their friends never taught them. Well, perfect segue. Speaking of TikTok kids, I feel like people talk, <laughs> I feel like people talk shit about this kid's training, but I think he's actually really fucking smart, and I think he actually gets it. You probably know who I'm talking about already, but I'm talking about Sam. 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 Yeah, yeah. I think Bro, I got actually... I got mistaken for him in California. <laughs> so <he's funny>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If, if, did you have like a hat on? If you have, a hat I had on, a hat on, real oh, low, yeah. fucking hair yeah, coming out the yeah. back. Yeah, I can see it. I can yeah. see it. <laughs> You've never but, seen a pro before, have you? There's a big yeah, difference here. But... <laughs> he's huge for 21 for sure. Yeah, he's, he's, a, he's a very good bodybuilder, yeah. But I, I think the guy, I think he's really smart. I think he knows exactly what he's doing. He's aware. He even says it. He's like, yeah, that was a pretty ugly set. I was kind of hurting. Like, he knows what he's doing. Oh, he's yeah. like, I want to get as much blood. I've seen him start with good form. And then when he fails, he tries to, like, get as much blood and muscle. Listen, like, maybe I can't handle that right now because I'm 30, which is still pretty young. But 21, I trained way worse than that. I was, like, <laughs> round back, deadlifting, like, seven yeah. plates, you know, kind of funky shit. I yeah. think he's actually – I like Sam. I, I, think, I think he's pretty he's awesome, dude. Bro, yeah. I, I think he's way smarter beyond his years. I think he's smarter than guys 10 years older than some of the, some of the people talking shit. I think he's smarter than some of the people talking shit about him, you know? And I think he, he's, I think he's like um, very self-aware and he's partially trolling with some of the yeah. stuff that he does. Like so, his food, his food video. I, I doubt that's all real. 
Really? Um, yeah. I, I mean, either he's on a <laughs> shitload of drugs or he's like one of the most genetically gifted metabolisms ever. But like, I, I don't, I don't think he's actually. Wait, which video? Because he has his own videos where, where he showed what he eats in the day, which was a little bit calmer. But the one he did on Hostile, he was yeah, on a road. Thing. Well, you got to keep in mind, he was on a road. So that wasn't. Oh, he was? Okay. Yeah, so when he was drinking that milk, he was like, I didn't eat all all morning, which he he usually would have ate. So he's like, fuck it, I'm going to just jug, uh, chug this gallon in the milk. <laughs> I've, done, I've, I've done that before. I'm not gonna yeah, Paul, Paul, remember? That's how I used to do it, too, though. I was like, Paul, as long as I get my protein and I get my calories, I don't give a fuck. Yeah. <laughs> and Paul used well, to give me so much shit for that. He's like, it's not how it works, y'all. It's like, it's working for me. <laughs> no, I think I'm bad as fuck in the offseason. Hey, dog, that was my scary ass muscle on the <laughs> See, I, I do, I do believe him because that that particular video was a little bit worse than usual. But okay. usually, he has his protein source and carb source. But okay. the carb source might be top ramen, which is a lot high in sodium. But he's really getting the same amount of carbs. And the protein source might be a rotisserie chicken, once again, high in sodium. As long as your body's flushing sodium meal, which at 21, it usually does, he's really just getting protein, fats, and carbs, right? The, the milk stuff is kind of crazy because my stomach would be so fucked up from that. But when yeah, I was. I doubt about, that's helping his acne, too, man, because he doesn't have a bit of an issue there. Like, that would, if he cleaned up his diet, like he would look a lot better. But I, I hope he does because of that. It's really shitty, you know. He's using Accutane to kind of help that. Kind problem of balance, yeah. That that that's part of that's part of youth, right? Youth, you don't think yeah. longevity as much. You think results. He's like, I'm getting jacked. That's all I care about. And then when your mortality comes more clear to you, maybe late twenties, some people earlier, then you're like, huh, maybe I can have a steak, you know, instead of instead of a rotisserie chicken and get better results, right? But also, he saved. He doesn't have a shit ton of money, you know. He's he's trying yeah. to save money. So yeah, I, I believe he will soon, man. He he will soon. Yeah, I, I think so. <laughs> I think, but but just how real and raw because he doesn't have to show us these things, you know. There's off there's off seasons where, you know, let's say a couple of weeks, my last meal will be not so clean, right? And I'm like, should I post this on Instagram? I'm like, I'm nah, I'm, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna show the world this, you know. Where I see like, fuck it. <laughs> Here, this is what I have, you know. So well, uh, straight up before USA's that last month, uh -huh. I knew my prep was gonna be like 20 weeks. There was no meal plan. I started my day with fucking McDonald's. I ended my night with little Caesar's pizza. Like, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I was like, I'm about to fucking starve. I already know. <laughs> fuck I, I mean, shit. If you guys remember <laughs> Stu, Stu might be on the younger side, but you probably still remember uh Juan Juan Morel when he was Doing his crazy. Oh yeah, yeah. I seen those videos. Fuck yeah. And then, and then I seen the comments. A lot of people thought it was fake. And I'm like, well, but he's showing it. He's showing himself actually consuming. I don't physically think I can eat that much food for fake. <laughs> so, <Yeah. it's, laughs> and this guy was enjoying it. He fucking. And I'm like, ah, I think I think he really eats like that. You know, I I just think some people's mentality. I think Juan could have been a better bodybuilder though. Maybe if he had had more structure. He didn't even have a coach. If he had a I coach, wonder, the more structure. I wonder if he like would have been though, because like how 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 do you get that much food and clean? He, he appeared to be able to to digest all that garbage, which is the craziest thing. Like the calories alone, that that's crazy, right? But like, how do you not just like spend all day on the toilet? You know, yeah. that's it's so much crap. Yeah. Well, but he fat and stuff. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Been like shit the next day. Bro, he he devoured a whole pizza while waiting for his wings. Then he devours the whole like twelve piece wings in one sitting. I'm like, how, yeah. how do you use a whole large piece as an appetizer? Like, what type and of? He shit? ate like a whole container of ice cream, not like a pint, yeah. like one of the fucking big ones. Big ones. Boy, yeah, that, that that's insane. I I just can't relate to that, but I, I, I <laughs> no, you can't, man. <laughs> I food, you get that. fat, <laughs> bro. Man, I mean, th this rebound been tough because I basically had to diet, or I was just gonna get. 
when I get so heavy, my training it just sucks, and that that's yeah. that's what I, I don't like when I can't train, can't catch my breath. But I, I could be three twenty, but it, I don't think that's gonna benefit me, and and much much of any way, much of any way, you know. But we we we've been off for a little while, but being that the last podcast we didn't look at the there were a the couple of shows that have the Texas. What show was before Texas? A Tampa, Hunter one. Mm. Yeah. Did, did we we talked about Tampa, right? We just didn't we talk about Texas. About I don't think we talked about Texas. Huh? I think we talked about Tampa and Texas. I I think we talked about Texas in private, didn't we? Did we? I don't remember. I don't remember. Then. I don't remember. But um, but I I like this guy. I, I like uh, uh, Eric Swift's physique. Yeah. Like uh, his 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 glutes just doesn't seem like super hard, but the mass of- on him definitely. They're just small. It's, he's not fat. Like he, they're just underdeveloped. Yeah, he, he definitely. Sure. Mean. Yeah, so I, I, I like his physique. I, I like Jordan Hutchinson's physique a lot too. That's one of the guys. Jordan needs oh, arms. Good. That's about it. Oh, there's Trey. You see Trey up there? Where is he? Oh, Trey. Yeah, Trey. Look Trey. at the difference in his legs, dude. <laughs> He put, he, put on a lot of size. he put on a lot of size, bro. Yeah. So I'm size. trying to do. <laughs> yeah. You, you see the the legs, the, the hairline took a little bit of a hit, but that's okay. It's uh, a- hey, bro, it's all right. <laughs> all right. Not all of us have stew genetics. <laughs> exactly. I mean, listen. <laughs> my, shit, my shit started to go after this last show. I was, oh, what the fuck? Bro, it's like every year it creeps up a little bit and you don't notice it. And then one day you're like, huh? That's strange. I feel like yeah, Justin... I, I don't notice it. I don't. <laughs> Justin fucking pointed out in one of my check ins. Like, fuck you talking about, Justin? Fuck out of here. <laughs> but think I shit on his head though. <laughs> but 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 do you notice when you come off, you you get like a little thicker in the hairline? Anybody notice that? It comes back. I, up. Shed, I actually shed a little bit more right after. Yeah, I, was, I did too. Believe it or not, I shed. It's all over the shower. Hmm. See, I usually in prep, uh, my hairline gets a little thinner. One prep, I had a whole ball spot. I don't know what the fuck that was, and then it kind of it kind of grew back. But my barber was like, "Hey, your hairline came back. I never seen that before." I'm like, "You don't have a lot of clients on on trend, you know." <laughs> so that's, 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 that's probably what it is. Oh, did did Charles Griffin that tricep looks? Is he doing something? Is he like pushing out his tricep? That that looks insane. That looks unreal. It's, it's a different way of him doing it, hundred percent. That seems his hamstring definitely came. I oh, that's that. sick, sick drop. But what the fuck is this? Like, how, he always had big arms, but that that seems like maybe he's pushing it into his lats more, which is which is smart. Oh, and it's a different arm because he doesn't have. Does he have the tattoo on? Yeah. His arm? I don't see the IVB tattoo. It looks like he's actually pulling down his arm and straightening That's it out. That's what I was gonna say. Well, uh, it's working because he he's changed his physique the most through his posing with the vacuum and all that shit. It's it's not his legs look insane, man. Yeah, he, the only only thing holding him back, I think, is just his whiff. I think just structural yeah. whiff. But he and he has some his, quad sweep. Yeah, yeah. That's but he has. He has just about everything you can ask for in a in a bodybuilder. But what did you guys think about uh, uh Texas? Did you feel like uh Andrew won handily or it was yeah, cool? man. Yeah, he he's just so big. Like he's so much bigger. Yeah, he I find him extremely impressive, to be honest. Like if you go by just pure bodybuilding criteria. I think Hunter is a phenomenal bodybuilder, but just standing there and coming out, Andrew is just fucking impressive, man. And he yeah. he got he got stronger and stronger as they as they worked him in the rounds too. Hunter started fading. Yeah, he did. He did. I mean, I, I remember we didn't I didn't see it, but I started seeing pictures. We're at the gym and I was showing Joe pictures of Hunter. I'm like, look, man, he don't look like he's like something's wrong. Like, it's, no. Yeah, it, it looked now that they were shit of him, and he just started fading. This guy but, but was like sixth like, place at the heavyweights, and he just won overall at North Americans. Look like Michael Ni- Ni- with, with legs. Fucking Nigerians, dude. Jesus. <laughs> but he, <laughs> I fucking miss being Nigerian by like one mile. 
<laughs> oh, I thought you said I thought you said I I missed it like he used to be at some point. <laughs> I know. How the hell does that work? <laughs> yeah, you really Me fucked too. up on that one, bro. I did, bro. <laughs> Me too, actually. Me too. Oh, you you you're close too, huh? <laughs> no, not quite. But <laughs> no, but... Mr. Mark. Ghana, Ghana's neighbors to Nigeria. I'm like, my dad should have just like just went across the border and then come back or something. I don't know. <laughs> but this, just but snuck this, in a quickie. <laughs> yeah, a little quickie and then come back and. It'll, 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 <laughs> but I mean, this guy was fucking impressive, bro. Yeah, and he wasn't even like peeled like he should. Like he could have been even more could be. He didn't well, he need had, to be them. He even got calves, bro. See the, the the Nigerians they even have calves. So how the fuck how the fuck you have calves? That's crazy. Because Samson and Andrew they got calves. Quentin got calves. That's, that's you want me to tell you how, baby? They don't work them in Crocs, probably. I <laughs> <laughs> don't like the Crocs. I don't like the Crocs. <laughs> I, 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 I'm so unbothered these days, bro. I don't even want to get dressed, bro. Sometimes I'm just. Whatever I have on, like like my, my my body, I just put on some crazy wear and then some crocs and I just get going. It's just, <laughs> it's just it, I mean the 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 right of wear are comfortable too, but I gotta like lace them up and shit. I'm I'm so oh, late. I'm I don't even, I don't even I don't even I don't even I don't even tie mine, bro. Oh you just leave it. That shit started in prep. In prep, I was like, bro, fuck this, man. I don't want to do anything. Yeah, I, I really like this guy's physique. He looks like Michael Lockett. He goes to we go to the same gym. He still looks like that, just like twenty pounds smaller. But Michael's the only thing is he had a, a leg injury as well, and he couldn't he really. He had like him. no cartilage in his knees, right? For the longest time, he could barely no. train his legs. But he also literally didn't diet. It was like Roman. He had to. <laughs> he had to eat more food to carb up. It was like no diet, carb up, do a show. And he could do like, I don't know. He could compete every week if he wanted to, you know. It's but I, that and he had the crazy glutes and the, he still looks like that. And I I know he's not on the diet. He's just at the gym. He limps too. I I think the leg injury is pretty bad. He he walks, yeah. well, you know. So he was to to make it to the Olympia with a limp, and still but you know have enough legs to make it to Olympia is actually impressive. But this yeah. guy has, has legs for days, you know. Yes, they, he, they was, just, he improved was, so much since the national last year, and he was not even a factor there. Yeah, he wasn't even the same person. He wasn't the same person. Elias looked really good too. Which one, Elias? Elias, uh, yeah. I feel, oh, this, I don't know who this guy is, but he looks he looks pretty impressive too. Yeah, he's light heavy. I've never seen him before, but no, I saw that guy on the right, um, the short guy. Like, yeah, he looks he was like a the lightweight or some shit. Damn, I mean, he he's the, the shortest. He looks the smallest one. He might be a bantamweight. Oh, yeah, bantamweight. He, he's got to be like five foot one, but if that right? put together, yeah, that man is about four four eight. Oh, <laughs> good God, <laughs> that's crazy. But he looks he looks really good. This this Ken guy, man, that's. I, I don't like when guys do the front double with good biceps and they, they keep it down here. Don't you think it looks better when you have good biceps and you, you show the peaks like that? I agree. I, yeah. It makes the whole thing one shape matter. I don't I don't Justin Shire, it's not too low. It's like here, even. That that you can get away with that. But he's this, got such sweepy triceps that he can do it. He but gets most way. people can't. And he's he's got such sweepy laughs and such Hanging triceps, but like it, it works for him, but that would look silly on me. Yeah. Same thing with the back double. When you squeeze your shoulder blades together, if you have a really thick back like Bonac, you can, you can, it can look good. But if you don't have a lot of shit going on in the middle, it actually makes it look uh, small. I, I actually tried that on stage because I was so flat. I was like, let me try to mush this shit together, give it some, some thickness. It just looks hollow. It just don't look good. So I. <laughs> <laughs> I think you should <laughs> let me smush this shit together. It just smush some shit together, give it some fullness. But <laughs> I, I think it's better to just open up. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they, he he looks good. At the, the 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 short guy looks really good as well. 
And this guy looks good. That was Small a good show. And mighty. That was a good show. All right, guys. Let's we we should probably cut it here. I, I know guys need to eat and nap and take a <laughs> shit and all that good stuff. I did all that before. <laughs> <laughs> Smart man. I didn't, I, I didn't train today yet. I, I'm debating. I trained six days already, but I'm feeling, I'm feeling, I'm feeling spicy, man. I'm feeling froggy. I'm not training, man. I am rehydrating and napping today. I was up until like yes, four thirty. Bro, I, I saw, I saw Mo Shaban at USA's, and he looks extremely downsized, bro. Like uh, really downsized. Did, did you see him, Paul? No, I shook his hand. <laughs> I, I wanted to ask him. But I don't. I don't want to be weird. Like maybe I, I don't. You know, it could be personal some shit. So I, I try to just not say anything. But I'll say, hey, what's up, Mo? Because we go to like some of the same gyms as well. And I didn't see him at the at the gym in a while. And he did all those muscle contests shows. He, he gets around. He, he's he's hustling for that cut for that cookie company around. Yeah, him and his, him and his yeah. wife. Yeah, but he's I so thought nice, he was, man. Huh? He's so nice. He's like the no, funniest guy ever. Yeah. Bro, he's the nicest person you ever meet. Yeah, he's yeah, super. Yeah. But it's like, um, I thought he was gonna compete this year. I remember him posting pictures, like he was in prep, and then he. I he's gonna do Cali. I, mean, I thought, yeah, yeah, I, I thought so too. Do that or Toronto. He does Cali every year, pretty much, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. He's won it. He won it last year, I think. I don't. I'm not yeah, sure. He yeah, he just. He downsized. It looked like he's taking a break. I'm not. I'm not sure. I, I know he had. Uh, I don't know if it was IBS, but it was some kind of serious gut issue um, last year. Uh, and I, I saw him at the. Uh, I saw him at the Rising Phoenix show in Phoenix, the women's competition. Uh -huh. um, and you know he was there with his cooking company and his people, but uh, like he said, I mean he was like like six weeks out from the Olympia at that point. I don't think, did he end up competing there or no? Last year? Because he was qualified. I don't think he actually competed though. That's a good point. I don't I don't remember seeing him there. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like we would know if he did because he's, 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 he's always out. talked about. Yeah. So no, I don't think so. No, yeah. So, so he was qualified, but he didn't do it. And I think there was some health issues. It's not like a heart or anything like that. It was, you know, some other shitty kind of thing that, you know, you don't really have control over. Um, so. I will say in person, man, his legs are fucking... Insane. I was just about to say, uh, have you guys seen Derek Lunsford's recent leg pictures? That that guy is on a different level, man. Um, that guy is on That's a level. fucking... I, I saw it today. I was like, Jesus Christ. Did he, is, it, is it on his Instagram as well? I think it's on his Instagram, yeah. I gotta be honest with you. Like after the Arnold, I was like, I felt like Samson. I felt like Samson was the front runner for the Olympia. But then when I seen the video of them together, because in my head I'm like, he's so much bigger than Derek. There's no way Derek could really stand next to him and look big, right? And after that video together, I'm like, oh, Derek is really holding his own. He doesn't. He looks shorter, but he didn't look smaller by any means. So I'm like, well, Sam Samson's like five uh, eleven, right? Something like that. Yeah, yeah. And Derek, but, Derek's like five six. Yeah, yeah, but Derek just destroys him from the back. Yeah, like and what the hell? Close. I fucking told you. <laughs> I said, what the hell? Like, okay, he's not gonna bring that to stage, no, but no. even if he brings what 70, 80 percent of that, bro, well, that's more than fucking enough because that, that looks Photoshop. Like, that looks Photoshop, but it's not. Fuck, yeah, man. so I, I I saw that and I couldn't believe <laughs> that. <laughs> that, that. It looks like Carlos's legs, which also look photoshopped, but they're yeah. like split out and like he's he's gonna be hard, you know. Bro, I mean, I I think Derek's gonna be Mr. Olympia, bro. I I I, actually, I told everybody that he's gonna win it this year. Like that's it. <laughs> I think he will. I think Samson is gonna be second. I think Heidi is gonna be third. I think Nick is gonna be. I don't see Samson beating Hottie just yet. Shit. No, look at I I agree. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah I I do think he. I, I think it's a possible third though. I do. I just don't see him beating Hottie yet. The I think, back I think and the conditioning. Uh, 
I think with Hottie's recent photos too, it looks like he's improving. I seen him a couple days ago, yesterday, the day before. But like you, you never know what's recent from Hardy. Uh, his left leg looks a little weird. Is one of his so legs is, yeah. is, uh, is injured or something? Because I'm not. I gotta be honest, man. I, I'm not a super huge fan of Hardy's look, but I I understand why he won. But yeah, bodybuilding criteria, like for sure. Exactly. Yeah. I don't like how his physique flows, like especially compared to Derek. Like last year, if I was a judge, <clears throat> I would have picked Derek. You know, I don't, I don't think his chest and shoulders need to look like Hotties because I don't think anybody's chest is as straight as Hotties. The whole well, time. I think I, I do think Hottie was just more complete. Like I, I still, as much as I want to choose Derek, like you look at Hottie's legs for that yeah. show compared to Derek, and uh, just his condition was a little harder throughout the whole body. Yeah, like there was no uh, way he was gonna, yeah. gonna give it to Derek. Yeah, I think Derek's yeah. hands were significantly harder. It was and yeah. lower back actually, but, from behind, from but behind. there was just so much meat on Hottie, top to bottom, from the back that like it was like another level. And Derek's back is crazy already, right? Well, Derek, right, yeah, yeah. Derek had everybody beat from the back, honestly. Like that, that, that was like a, like a Phil Heath, Phil, Phil Heath like uh, days. Mm-hmm. We feel beat everybody from the back. I feel like Derek beat everybody from the back, but uh, from the front, yeah, from the front, Hadi, not the front double though. I, I, I think Hadi had the great front double, but I think Derek had the better front double. Uh, I think yeah, he had that last. Yeah, I think Hadi ah. beat him from the side too. But man, uh, I definitely got my money on Derek this year. If I'm being honest, yeah, there's no doubt in my mind. I put a lot of money on betting on Derek. <laughs> I really would, especially with Hadi in this corner. I would put on. I would put up about a grand, which is a lot. Which is a lot for <laughs> for a bodybuilding show. <laughs> <laughs> but it's funny. Back in Phil's day, everybody be like, "This person is the winner. This person is the winner." Once you say, "Put some money on it," nobody puts money against Phil because yeah. they're going to win. They just want somebody else to win, so that's why they say that. But they knew they just was- needed something to talk about back then because <laughs> it was just a foregone conclusion. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, nobody would, up a little bit. Like, nobody was going to put money against Phil. That that just wasn't a good bet. I got to watch these Tyler mm-hmm. videos. I haven't been watching. Even the year that he lost, he shouldn't have lost. But against, against yeah, because of, of his gut, like shot for shot, he won still. But it is what it is. Well, well, they were, they were trying to send a message, and they, I mean, yeah. they sent it. They have me, me, really me, and me, and me talked about that exactly. We did. Well, Dorian won with a gut. With no bicep, no tricep. Ronnie won with several guts. Um, I mean, it's happened before, but when it came to Phil, they had to make an example out of Phil at the time. Yeah. Listen, Sean Roden, you take Phil out of the lineup, Sean Roden wins the, that shows, you know, uh, quite, quite a few times. But, I mean, Phil was just over, so overpowering from everywhere else that it's hard to realistically say he should have lost. You know, Sean was... Sean destroys him on front double, abs and thighs, front last spread for sure. But those are three poses. The other four was was filled by by hey, straight up, even with the blown out stomach, I'd still want to look like Phil instead. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I just would like in a tank top, dude. Dude, <laughs> fucking he's solid, so bro. big. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'll so, take that so, any day. So PRC this day. Phil is a better bodybuilder than any of us will ever be. Me okay, so okay, so me personally, I think Phil is the goat. I think nostalgia makes Ronnie the goat and Ronnie in the gym training. But people combine Ronnie's looks. People people combine 03 and 98. They're like, no, no, he's too big and shredded for Phil. I'm like, no, no. 98 was shredded like Phil, but he was about 245, they said. So he was smaller than Phil. 03 is way bigger than Phil, but he was not nearly in Phil condition. So you can't combine that and say that beats Phil. You have to go by each person because we're not combining all Phil's looks. We're saying take 2011 or 2013 Phil. Does does 98 Ronnie beat that? He had gyno and he was Phil's exact same weight, but taller. So he's technically smaller than Phil. You take 03, 
that's not going to beat Phil because he just wasn't – just because you have lean glutes doesn't mean you're shredded head to toe. It means your glutes are lean, which Ronnie's glutes are always lean. But he wasn't peeled. He was big and full of the house. So I don't think 03 Ronnie beats 2011 Phil, and I don't think 98 Ronnie beats 2011 Phil. So I think technically that makes Phil the GOAT. I think Ronnie's legacy, eight Olympias, is what technically makes him the GOAT or, you know, his intensity or his nostalgia. But if you take who's the greatest bodybuilder, look, I think 2011, 2013 Phil is the best bodybuilder we've seen on stage. That's an unpopular opinion because I think I think we get so caught up in nostalgia. Oh, the 90s and the 2000s, they were just better. And it's like, were they really, though? Or are we just saying that? Yeah. One Not or consistently two. so. I yeah, think we people look at- like fucking lose their minds over like nineties conditioning when it was like a couple of guys who were shredded like that. That's and they, they were over diuretic for the most part. And they weren't as lean. They weren't as lean as guys get nowadays. Yeah. And then both when you say these things, okay, well, you look at the uh 1970, 1980 nationals, you have you know, you combine for 20 Olympias with a, yeah, but that was 30 years ago. Like, we don't know what's going to happen 30 years from now. You look at these lineups 30 years ahead of time. Maybe Derek Lunsford has six, seven Olympias. Maybe Nick Walker has one or two. You know, maybe Heidi has three or four. So you you can't look retroactively and compare it to the pre- present because we haven't seen the future yet. So obviously there's going to be all these titles 30 years after. But in, you know what I'm saying? So when you look back 30 years from now, then you can say, well, that lineup was crazy because you have four Mr. Olympic, but that's retro. You can't compare retroactively. What you only thing you can compare is the is the physique. You can't compare the accolades, you know. But people compare yeah. accolades as if that makes sense. Oh, you oh, how, can you name anybody who did the USA's, bro? You don't even follow. You don't even follow the USA's. Of course you can't name it, right? How do you how does how does Dorian say? I don't know anybody who's competing. Yeah, because you don't follow the sport. Of course you don't know. But back in the days, you followed the magazines, so it it, it doesn't make any sense. I don't you, think the guys, the '90s guys, like they don't. They're just kind of mean nowadays. But a, the, a lot of them, you can tell, they're just bitter and washed up and broke. And you know, they had money 20 years ago, and now they're broke, and they're starting GoFundMe's when shit goes wrong. And it's they don't so like sad. It. It's sad, you know. Um, yeah. They had their chance, and they're not bad bodybuilders, obviously, but like. Man, be supportive of the sport. Don't just shit on it. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. Like, fuck be all like, this back in my day stuff. Like, okay, be like that was twenty years ago. Be like Jay, or be like Dennis James. Like, yeah. or Chris Premier. Instead of him shitting on your posing, he'll say, "Hey, come to me. I'll help you pose." So if you really yeah. don't have this guy's condition, be like, "Let me coach you." Uh, I mean, like, try to help instead of yeah. being. Uh, it's not everybody. You're right. Yeah. But yeah. Some of the some of the stars are like they're they're not positive like like I wish they were. Yeah, I remember Greg Valentino was on Rx Mother. He's like, all these guys look the same nowadays. And then Dave was like, bro, can you name anybody these days? And he's like, um, what? How can you say they look like you don't even know you, you don't yeah. even follow the sport? Dave, Dave's always de- defending the current guys <laughs> because he he gets it. He knows all of his friends are assholes about us. You know, yeah, they're all they're all old hat, and they all talk shit. That's their deal. It's like nobody's in shape. Nobody trains hard. Really, I mean, just you three alone to train train hard. But we're basing it on one DVD that they put on the show for the camera. <laughs> like I see you guys <laughs> train every week, and you you don't train just only when the camera's on. You train hard all the time. Like that that's just a stupid way of looking at things. How would you know who trains hard? What what is because you you have to yell or you have to throw weights you have to be loud what does that even mean like only you only you really know if you train hard you know and guys mm-hmm. I think are the strongest ever it's just it's just a it's just a dumb argument every generation you know what else I love about the nineties guys they talk about how little drugs they took and that is such bullshit like oh, they were taking better drugs in just as high dosages they just don't they they have to maintain this like this mythical status of themselves like oh we took 300 milligrams of deca we were open pros like (laughs) you're fucking liars man i know for a fact that a lot of those guys just lie through their teeth because like 
my coaches talked to them directly and they were giving them cycles that they used to do. You know, yeah. it's like they're, they're just liars, period. Um, Belos calls them out. Uh, I, I fucking love when when I watch Dennis James podcast and he calls them out. He's like, yeah. wait, 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 wait. <laughs> He's like, wait, wait, Flex, you just said you win zero carbs all prep, but you had French fries. How did that? How, how did that work? Uh, <laughs> how do you have French fries and zero carbs? Like, how does that work? <laughs> and he was like, oh, I did two down two all natty. He was like, okay, okay, you were a natty. Let's keep. He was like, well, I got it from the doctor. He's like, that makes it natty because you got it from the doctor. Like what? What, what do we? Do? Yeah. I, I love when Milos does that because Milos is just like no bullshit. He did, he's not trying to make himself look special. He's like, bro, just say what it is. If you took it, no, I never took insulin. Oh, just maybe that one time. It's like, come on. <laughs> well, well, you you took it. Just 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 admit it. You know. I think. Yeah, I don't I, understand why they're so. I guess because they're trying to maintain that mythical status for themselves, right? They, yeah. We think of those guys 30 years ago as, as, as different or special. Um, but, like, like technically speaking, we don't really have anything to lose. Like, just be honest. I, I, I mean, actually, if they were honest, it would probably make your head spin, and they don't want to tell the kids about what they were doing. <laughs> it's no, probably no. pretty fucking wild. I mean, those Dan Duchesne's days, you know. Well... Um, we only know what we know because of them. We only know Essiclean and Cyte enhancement because of the nineties. We only know we all uh, we we know insulin and GH because of the nineties. So you had to do it. That's why we know it. We didn't make it up. <laughs> we, we, we're just trying to do what you what you we guys. Stand, we stand on the shoulders of giants. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I I think too uh, the big part of it is um, back in those days it was so taboo to talk about it. You know, so taboo yeah. to talk about those that you're doing it. Period. And so yeah. I think their mind frame is still stuck in those days where they kind of don't want to discuss or don't want to bring it up because of that. But not all of them, but I think a majority of them, you know? Yeah. But if you see everybody think... else doing it nowadays, like, who fucking cares? <laughs> I mean, yeah. anymore. Well, I'll tell you who does care, actually, and you have to be careful now because you're a pro now. Like, the the Mannion. I mean, the IFBB will not Oh, dog, I'm mad 100%. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. It's <laughs> like... I know, I know. Martin was uh, doing a podcast. Martin Fitzwater, he's doing a podcast a little while back, and he was like, you know, talking about drugs and stuff. I don't know if he was talking about dosages or whatever, but he, like, he was told in no uncertain terms, "Do not talk about that shit, or you will suffer for it." So, oh, like, I, I wish I could, uh, you know, the implication being placing. This is from somebody in the IFBB. Um, so, like, you just don't like. We're just not allowed to talk about it, and it sucks because I wish. You know, I, be truthful I, I, to yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I, I go on professional muscle and I, I, I'm honest with what I'm doing on there. Cause like, I know, I know kids aren't going to be on the professional muscle forum. Nobody's on forums anymore, you know, mm-hmm. but like, I couldn't do that on Instagram. I can drop like milligrams of shit that I'm taking. Yeah. It's not crazy. It's pretty, it's normal. It's na- standard shit that you guys probably do, you know, but like, I mean, I, I'm not allowed to like. Yeah. Well, you know, on the on the IFBB the on the on the form that you sign, I mean, the, the, the stipulates you can't be talking about it. Or you no, know, it stipulates that um they could drug test us. They drug test us. We're found you know uh, positive. They could drop us. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's kind of like, yeah. but well, of course, to protect their interests, you know. Well, I'm the only one that I'm not a pro, so I take a gram and a half for test. <laughs> 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 no, 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 just. I'm 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 just natty actually. I'm I'm just hundred percent natty. Good I'm on, on TRT. You. TRT is a new natty. That's acceptable. So mm-hmm. I I eat organic beef. Yeah, just just a little TRT. <laughs> uh, I do it on Wednesdays, and it's I just so stupid man. It's not twenty years ago. Like I I just want to be honest with yeah. all kinds yeah. of shit, but like that too. Um, you know, if some kid wants to copy what I'm doing and fuck himself up. Fine. I did that when I was twenty. <laughs> Dude, I like it. It's my responsibilities. I'm like, hey, I don't give a shit. Go for you it. Know, I feel no. I feel no responsibility of protecting these morons. They're you know, gonna do. Be- it. Better they get advice from me than some other idiot on TikTok. You know. Yeah, wouldn't you rather hear from the source than read something online that you don't know who the hell wrote it and everything? They, like they wouldn't believe us anyways. So, I mean, yeah. Well, well, you, you know what it is. I, I actually did. I I used to talk about my cycles in full length. That, um, I, that was maybe twenty eighteen and before every single detail. 
if it's on the lower side, you're a liar. Yep. If it's if it's a little bit high, you're gonna die tomorrow. Yeah. So so what can you say to make somebody feel comfortable? There's nothing you can say. If I say, oh, 500 tests, oh, you're fucking lying. You can't be that big. If I say a gram and a half, oh, shit, holy. Oh, my God, you're gonna, you're gonna you're killing yourself. So it's like there's nothing you can say to make people believe you or feel comfortable. So you, you're kind of damned if you do, damned if you don't. So if you're going to yeah, like, about, you know, you, you, you're going to have idiots who just, like, train like pussies. They don't diet. Like, they do all the hard bodybuilding stuff wrong. Like, they don't do that part. And they wonder why you don't look like they don't look like anything. Yeah. So they just call you a liar. So damned if you do, damned if you don't. Uh-huh. Yeah, I, bet, I, I bet I could guess your off-season cycle, and I'm probably pretty accurate. It's probably yeah. anywhere from 750 to a grammar test, probably somewhere between 500 to 700 EQ, maybe like 50 to 100 anadrol, anywhere from 6 to 10 I use a GH. If you're doing slim, you're probably doing 10 to 15 pre- Ten to fifteen post. How, how close? Uh, pretty much, yeah, spot on. Yeah. It, it, it's you not. Give take a couple hundred. Less a little less right. insulin right now, but like, yeah, it, it, like because we all do the same shit. It's not that. Oh. It's not that exciting. You know, no. this is like the least interesting part of the sport once you've done it for a little while. It's I'm more appealing if you're young. <laughs> yeah, oh. it's more interesting. Like, there's more, like, yeah, I take drugs. I've taken the same drugs for the last five years, basically. There, there's <laughs> nothing more to, I mean, I, I, I'll I even do you one better. Your diet, it's probably like a morning. Let me see. You probably do a eight, maybe eight to 16 ounces of egg whites. You might do. Mm, bro, they make me fart. I, I can't. Oh, you can egg do. Whites. I, yeah, <laughs> I, I do cream of rice and protein to start the day. That's how I have to do it. I'm oats and whey. Yeah. Oh, oats and, okay. So oats and whey. Yeah, with some uh, Second butter. Meal. Good shit. Good shit. So throughout the day, you're probably doing eight to eight to twelve ounces of beef or uh, or chicken. Then you're doing eight to eight to twelve ounces of rice or potato, <laughs> and that's pretty Not, much. Yeah. yeah. What the fuck? Well, are you not eating zebra? What the fuck? You, what the fuck else do you eat? I, I kind of feel bad when I'm putting together like coaching plans and like diets and stuff, and like I look back through them, I'm like, fuck, these are really similar. Like, it, like if you looked at my diets that I give to people, you'd think I was like copy pasting them, but I'm yeah. not. It's like, like this it's is what it comes like, to. All the best bodybuilders in the world eat like a lot of meat and rice. It's not complicated, man. Oh. You know, I had yeah, you can. Uh-huh. You can add some in, th- some things in for variety or whatever, but like, not, personally for me, I, I don't like variety. It means I have to cook more shit. It's mm-hmm. I have to go to the grocery store and remember to buy more crap. It's like uh, meat and rice, shit works. It's worked for uh, that's you know, all I do. Half a decade. <laughs> it's simple as that. I actually had one client come from me. He was like, "Bro, I need to talk to you." I said, "Yeah, man, what's up?" He was like, "Me and my friend were comparing diets, and it's way too similar." I said, what? Who's your boy? He said, yeah, Sammy. Look at Sammy's diet. Look at mine. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, pretty, pretty similar. My diet is pretty similar as well. Just a little bit more food. I was like, is it working? Are you getting muscle? He said, yeah, but I feel like I paid you and it's too similar. I'm like, it's bodybuilding. I, I, if you want to eat horse meat, go ahead and fucking eat horse meat. I don't tell you. But you're going to be eating chicken and beef pretty much. <laughs> this yeah. is going to be, I'm just going to up the food a little bit as long as the offseason can go. Maybe i add a little bit of this. Look. But yeah, I mean, it's, of course it's similar. What the fuck you, the fuck you want it to be? I mean, you're about the same size as him. Got the same goals as him. Yeah, it's going to be a pretty similar diet. I mean, you could do it yourself too. I, I mean, if you don't want to pay for it, that's fine. You, you could you could just do it yourself. You I'll know, see you in a couple months. <laughs> yeah, you'll be, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. But they want you, same with the cycles. If they don't see like a crazy cycle, they'll be like, hey, that's it. Anything else I should get? No, you're good. You, you think I should add insulin? Um, I, you, you're pretty insulin sensitive right now. You'll be good. Uh, I just want to, what do you think about farm GH? No, I think you'll be good. With it's, it's usually the younger kids who are like that. I've noticed. Well, like yeah. the early yeah. 20s, like um, if they're like in their late 20s or 30s, it, it, they don't ask questions like that. Because like the, the, their media consumption is different. You know, they're, they're, they heard about some stuff on Instagram and like now they want to, 
talk to the coach about it. Like, yeah. So I've been thinking, like, no, man, you're like a year or two away from that, at least. <laughs> They want to do the. Uh, they want to do mints. Oh some, God! Some shit I never heard fucking about. Fucking terrible drug. I hate that shit. I hate it. I Give me tits. <laughs> or like, if they don't want to do a cycle yet, they want to do like pro hormones and charms. I'm like, I gotta be honest. Like, I think you should stay natty or do the real things. If you're not ready, just just stay natty. I mean, yeah. I don't tell you, but I don't think you should try to beat around the bush. But guys, let's wrap it up so we have some uh, energy left to to eat and sleep. So <laughs> I'm uh, energy I'm, to sleep. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you gotta preserve that sleeping energy, bro. Yeah. All right, bro. Uh, I'll see you guys. Nice talking to you guys, like always, man. Yeah, thank you for having me, guys. All right, man. Yeah. Right,